Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Juanette, and I'm an independent stepping up demonstrator here in the United States. All of the supplies that I use for this project are available through my online store 24 7 at juanettehewitt.stampingup.net. I made this card with two different kinds of pattern paper. This one was for a co-worker. Many of you know I'm a labor and delivery nurse and so I make birthday cards for each co-worker on their birthday. This card that I'm going to be demonstrating today will also be given to a co-worker and my sister, who is also an avid crafter, her name is Sherry. Shout out to her. Hi, Sherry. When I showed her this card, she said it was one of her favorites that I've made. And I must admit that I was absolutely delighted with this card and how it turned out. You see how it folds down flat? fits into an envelope I made, 5 by 7 and then when the recipient gets it, they can see that it folds down and then there is a little bit of a flap in the back that helps it stand up. The colors I used for this card were pool party, and petal pink. Oh, I just love it. I'm very pleased with how it turned out. I may have to make another one like this. It's actually quite easy to make the stand-up part Now the stamp I used is Power of Hope, which is part of Stamping Up Celebration. You can earn it free with a $100 order. You cannot buy that stamp set. You can only earn it free. And then I used the Parisian Blooms Designer Series Paper. And like I said, I used Pool Party and Petal Pink. And there is a picture of the stamp set itself and all the images. So I stamped out the lanterns in Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And then I co colored three of them with the petal pink. And then three of them in the pool party. Using both light and dark to give a little bit of shading to the sides. Then I fussy cut each one out, which was actually quite easy. And that little hole at the top is from the Label Me Punch, which is also in the mini catalog. Then I didn't like that white part up at the top, so I colored each one of those top areas, again with the petal pink and the pool party. and I will be stringing them on some of our silver metallic thread so that I will be able to hang them up at the top of the card. Now that's the metallic thread. It comes in gold and silver and I think I have some rose gold also, but because my background paper had some silver in it, I decided to use the silver. 
Now, this took a little bit of time to do. It was quite fiddly, um, but in the finished card, I'm glad I did it. It really looks nice. So I tied a knot in the first one, then strung each one, alternating the colors, and left a small little gap between each one. So a pool party one and then a petal pink one. And like I said, this, this whole stringing of the lights took at least uh, 10 or 15 minutes. But again, I love crafting, so it doesn't bother me when things take uh, a long time to complete. It's the joy I feel from actually the creation and I guess the challenge to see if I can do it. Now the lady here was stamped again in Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I took some of our uh, basic black Stampin' Write marker and filled in a little bit of her hair. Then I took the petal pink, both the light and dark marker and colored her dress and the umbrella. Again, putting a little bit of shading on that left-hand side. And then I wanted her sash or belt to be a little bit of a different color, so I took a silver gel pen and colored in her belt. Then I fussy cut her out. Now this stamped image is, I believe that is called a pagoda. And then the trees are also from the stamp set. And I did a little bit of masking to have the pagoda in front of the trees. I colored the pagoda in crumb cake and also pool party. And again, there are no dies for this set, so I fussy cut each one out to place on my card. And the roof of it is in the pool party. These are our alcohol blender pens, and they come in light and a dark shade of the colors. Then again, I came in with a little bit of the light and dark crumb cake to color the ground just a little bit so it wouldn't look like they were kind of floating there. I don't think you see it very much in the final card, but again, it's those small little details that I think add to the final product. And I wanted a little bit more shading on the roof, so I added some more of the dark pool party. Then I used the light and dark old olive blend just to add a little bit of color to the trees. Still leaving some of that white in the background there. Now 
a little bit of green on the grass there. And then I fussy cut some of the flowers out from the designer series paper. Now some of those flowers you can see are from a uh, punch and you see them up on the left hand side but I did not end up using them. I only used the ones from the designer series paper and then I added some of those champagne rhinestone jewels to the middle. That was a banner from a paper pumpkin kit, previous one that I had received. It's in pool party. And then I stamped the happy birthday in the middle of it. Now, this piece here, uh, I think I'm going to show you later on the size of it. But I did start stamping my background. Now those are some clouds there and I did those in balmy blue and that is a two and three fourths by three and three fourths piece of white that we will mat onto the top of the card. Then for the mountain I used the waterfront stamp set and smoky slate and added a few mountains in the background underneath the clouds there. All the dimensions for this card will be in the description box below. So all you will need to do is copy and paste them onto your pages if you have a Mac or Microsoft Word document and then you would have them. For the ground I use Crumb Cake and again that image from My Meadow stamp set. And just added a little bit of uh, ground there. There were some small images that I stamped on making it look like a little bit of some rocks. And again there is a lot of layers that go over the top of it so you don't see very much of this but still I think it added a lot. I stamped some of the birds in smoky slate just up in that top left hand corner. And then I took some old olive stamp pad and again from the My Meadow I stamped a little bit of a green grass or ground using second generation stamping so that it would be light in between the mountains and that sand area. I really like that cloud image. I love that stamp set. Sometimes it's difficult to find a stamp set where the clouds look realistic. So now these are the supplies you will need for making the card itself. These are all the little images that I stamped or cut out that I will use to decorate the card. There's the lady that I fussy cut out. I stamped the bridge from the My Meadow set. Colored a little bit of pool party down at the bottom and fussy cut that out. Then those are some lilies and uh, a lily pad that I will also add to the card. Now these are out of pool party and you will need a piece of seven by four and a half 
colored cardstock, and again I used Pool Party. Then you will need a piece of nine by four and a half. And along the nine inch side, you will score it at one inch and at three inches and then turn it over and score again at the three inch mark. The one inch will be a mountain fold and the three inch will be a valley fold. And I will show you that in just a little bit. Then you will need a piece of six and one fourth by three inches And you will score this at one fourth of an inch one and a fourth inch and at five and one fourth inch and all of these are mountain folds So fold them and burnish each of those score lines. Then you will need a piece of five by two and a piece of three inch by one inch. And this will help support your card when it stands up. And you will score along the three inch side at one half inch and two and a half inches. And those will also be mountain folds. Now that is your piece of nine inch by four and a half. The three inch mark score line, you will do a valley fold. And then at that one inch, you will do a mountain fold. And that is how it will look. Kind of like a, like a chair almost. Then you will take your piece of seven inch by four and a half and you will glue it to the back of that piece that you folded. So then that will give you a one inch overhang at the back of the card. So apply your liquid glue to the back of that piece that you folded. Line it up at the top. And then you will have a one inch overhang on the left hand side and a one inch overhang on the right hand side. Now for my mats I used petal pink and on these little sheets 
where it says white, I actually use petal pink. The white is when I made the birthday card using the Honey Bees Designer Series paper. You could use any color that you want. So I applied liquid glue and again I use that 3-in-1 Beacons glue because it is a solvent glue, not water-based, and it does not warp your cardstock. Then that's a piece of four and a quarter by five and three fourths, again the petal pink, and then four by five and a half of the designer series paper. Isn't that just absolutely gorgeous paper? It has both the pool party and the petal pink in it with a little bit of silver accents. So you're going to glue it right there on that one flap there. And I keep trying to show you how it will look in the end because I know sometimes these cards can be a little bit confusing. So your six and a quarter by three inch that you scored at a quarter, one and a quarter, and five and a quarter. Again, all mountain folds. Now the scene that you designed or stamped three and oh let's see what was it you saw it uh, yeah two and three fourths by three and three fourths you are going to glue it to the front of that piece now make sure you have that small little flap that i believe is only a quarter inch at the top leave the one inch border at the bottom And so we will be taking that one inch and we will butt it up right against that score line and glue it to that bottom part of the card. So see where I'm pointing right at that score line and you want it in the center. So apply some liquid glue. And again, you've heard many crafters say this, liquid glue is great because it gives you a little, a little bit of wiggle room if you don't center it exactly in the middle or where you want it. So butt that up right against that score line, but still make sure that the card will fold over. So I'm holding that in place. Then you're going to take that small little piece that is our hidden support. It was three by one inches and we scored it at a half an inch and two and a half. We fold it with mountain folds and we're going to adhere it to the back of the card first. So open up your card there a little bit. Apply liquid glue to that small little tab there on that on both sides. And make sure that it's kind of a U shape looking up toward the card. So line that bottom piece right at the bottom. Then if you fold that flap over the other section of glue, it should line up perfectly. And see now we have a little support there to hold the card.
and then that flap will just fold over and be glued there. So this is a piece of one and three fourths by four and a quarter. And again, it is petal pink and then one and a half by four inch pattern paper. And then you're going to need a piece of five by two for the bottom part to mat the petal pink over. Now you can see that there is some uh, leftover of the liquid glue because I glued that petal pink piece down to the card without adding that pool party mat to the back of it. And again, thank goodness for uh, liquid glue because I was able to pull that off without ruining the card. So put a little bit of liquid glue on that overhang right there and apply that three layered piece over the top, making sure that the bottom of it lines up evenly with the bottom of the card. Now you will notice there is an overhang on both sides and that's fine. That will add to the look of the card. And you will still have five inches across. And see how nicely it folds down? Fantastic design of a card. So you will need two pieces of four and a quarter by six and seven eighths. And again, that is not the white. It was for another card, um, but that is petal pink. You will score one piece at two and an eighth at the four and a quarter side, which is the middle. So two and one eighth all the way down and that's on the four and a quarter inch side and then you will fold that and burnish it and that will help or be part of our stand now this is important because the card that I made with the bees I didn't do this correctly, so it wouldn't stand very well. So you are going to glue these pieces together. And you're going to make sure that you have a little bit of border on the left, the right, and the top, but not at the bottom. So do you see how I'm putting that piece of petal pink cardstock right to the bottom of the back of the card. There is only a border on the left, the right, and the top side of the card. Then you will add that piece that is folded and burnished to the left side of the card so that it will help the card stand up. So some liquid glue onto the back and again at the bottom you're going to line it up exactly at the bottom of that other piece of petal pink. See how I'm able to wiggle that and make sure that's right on? And that will help the card stand up. So when you fold it out, the back there helps the card stand up. 
Now let's attach that last little piece with a little bit of liquid glue. I believe it's a quarter inch little flap and you're just going to glue it to the back of the card making sure that you have a nice right angle. And then you can just put your thumbs underneath there just to make sure it adheres well. Now I'm going to be bringing in all of my um, fun things that I'm going to decorate it with. I've got my pagoda, my lady. You are going to want to make sure that nothing overhangs the five inch mark. So see how I'm lining that up? Now I'm going to put some music on and you can just watch me decorate.
So then I popped up the happy birthday banner with dimensionals. And you were probably thinking when you saw me at those lanterns, dang, that girl needs some lotions on that hand. Typical nurse hands from the alcohol. Uh, the hand sanitizer and washing our hands so much. So just pull off the adhesive and apply it to the front of your card. And that was from the Timeless Tulip Stamp Set. Then I didn't like the way that top was empty so I took another mat of the Petal Pink and the Designer Series paper. The dimensions are right there on the screen or will be in, again, the description box. And I added it to the top and then trimmed off that metallic thread. And then adding a few of those fussy cut flowers out and glued them to each side of the happy birthday banner. Then I felt like I needed to make an envelope for it since it's a little bit of a bulky card. So my Envelope is five and a half by seven and a half. I took our stamping up envelope punch board and some designer series paper cut by I believe it was ten and a half by ten and a half. And you're gonna line it up at the is that four and a half inch mark, score it down, turn it over, line it up again, punch it out. You've seen me make these envelopes before. If you have a big bulky card that you're going to hand deliver to somebody and not mail, then making your own envelope is great because you can glue it so that you have a little bit of a bigger card. And what I do before I glue my card together, I add the, or glue my envelope together, I add my card to the inside just to make sure it will fit. Then punch round each corner. Fold and burnish your score lines. And again, I was debating a little bit on which side to use, but I decided to keep the script on the front of the envelope. making sure that if it's a pattern paper, it is not upside down. So add some scoring tape to each side there. Peel off the backing. Lay your card in the middle of it. Fold in both sides and then the top section. See how nicely that fits? Love it, love it. 
Again, I'm so pleased with this card. It was so much fun to make. And then I'm adding my final little tag on the back created by one at I would like to thank each one of you, my subscribers, for watching my channel. Like I said uh, in previous tutorials, if there was something that you, uh, some feedback, both positive and negative, I welcome it. This is a learning process and I want to make things that each of you would like to make and learn from. Yes, maybe put in the comment, put some lotion on those hands, girl. But thank you, everyone, for all your comments. I've only had positive comments, and I really appreciate that. I hope you make this card and enjoy it. And have a great day crafting. Goodbye. Talk to you guys later.